Do you wallow in self-pity? Do you feel sorry for yourself? Listen to these seven statements and ask yourself, do one or more of these describe me? You think your problems are worse than anyone else's. You're convinced no one understands how hard life is for you. You're constantly withdrawing from friends to throw yourself a pity party. You're more likely to talk about what went wrong than what went right. You're complaining about how life's not fair. You struggle to come up with things to be grateful for. And you're convinced that life is easier for everyone else. If one or more of those statements describe you, then you probably have a problem with self-pity. Now listen, nobody likes to be around somebody who's always feeling sorry for themselves. Nobody likes a me monster. Nobody says, well, I want to hang out with her because she's always complaining, or I think he's cool because he's always throwing himself a pity party. You have to be careful about these, this kind of thinking, this attitude, because it's self-destructive. And if you get involved with it too long, nobody wants to be around you. It ruins relationships and you never find any solutions to your problems. You're constantly just stuck in the negative. Now the Bible has another approach. The Bible suggests an attitude of gratitude. Let me share some verses with you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. Psalm 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Give thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Jesus was the perfect example of someone who refused to wallow in self-pity. He was mistreated so poorly, and he was the only innocent man who ever lived, yet he didn't complain. There were plenty of bullies in his life, but he refused to be made a victim. Instead, when he was hanging on the cross, looking down at his persecutors and those who betrayed him, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Another great example of someone who had an attitude of gratitude was Jeremiah Denton, who served in the Alabama uh, served in the United States Senate for the state of Alabama from 1981 to 1987. Denton was shot down. Uh, he was a naval aviator in the Vietnam War and was shot down and captured as a prisoner of war for seven years. And during those seven years, he was tortured horribly. But he led the other prisoners and constantly aggravated his tormentors in Vietnam any way he could. Uh, he taught the other prisoners how to communicate with one another using signals and tapping Morse code on the walls and even using coughs to communicate when they had no other means available to them. One of the most amazing parts of Denton's life was when he was chosen to be in a propaganda interview for the Vietnam uh, people and he was televised and his role was to portray a good prison camp that was taking care of the prisoners and feeding them and giving them what they needed. And he did that with his voice, but he did something else that the Vietnamese did not realize at the time. He complained about the lighting being in his eyes and he used blinks and uh, communicated through Morse code a word, the word torture. It's really amazing what he was able to do under the circumstances. He never complained. He never became bitter. He chose to look for blessings, and he chose to be positive. And when he was finally re released after seven years of being a prisoner of war in 1973, he gave this amazing speech that showed how grateful he could be in those circumstances. Here's what he said. We are honored have the opportunity to serve our country under difficult circumstances. We are profoundly grateful 
to our Commander-in-Chief and to our nation for this day. God bless America. God bless. He served in the United States Senate from 1981 to 1987. You have a choice. You can be grateful. Maybe you need to build some practices into your life, into your daily schedules to develop the discipline of gratitude, to develop an attitude of gratitude. It doesn't happen overnight. And so you can do some things to make yourself more positive and more grateful. For example, you could keep a journal and every day at the end of the day, think about at least one thing that was a blessing and write it down. Keep track of them. And if you don't want to keep a journal, you can just get up every morning and think about one blessing and speak it out loud or before you go to bed every night in prayer to God, thank him for at least one thing. There's a silver lining in every cloud. Even the worst of days has a blessing. We just have to choose to be grateful. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for JCA, and I hope you have a great day.